It took four days of discussion before a partial agreement was reached. The Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, and his South Sudanese counterpart, Salva Kiir, finally agreed on a series of texts signed in Addis Ababa on Thursday. The documents intend to put an end to several months of conflict, even if the agreement doesn't cover the different territorial disagreements between the two countries, it does for the moment avert imminent war after border fighting earlier this year. This agreement is a model and demonstrates the ability of the Sudanese and African nations to resolve their problems through dialogue and negotiation. The UN Secretary General warmly welcomed negotiations between the two Sudans. The UN had threatened sanctions if talks failed. They provide important building blocks for a stable and prosperous future for both the countries. I commend the President Bashir and President Salva Kiir for again choosing peace over war. The agreement covers security, economic relations, cooperation and the status of citizens of either country who reside in the other's territory. One of the texts anticipates the restart of oil production by South Sudan. A stoppage in January by South Sudan plunged the economies of both countries into turmoil. Another element of the documents refers to the creation of a buffer zone between the two nations, with the presidents in effect agreeing to a demilitarized zone. As far as the question of the contested border is concerned, this issue remains unresolved, notably the status of Abia, one of the main stumbling blocks between the two heads of state. It is now the responsibility of the AU HIP to refer the matter to the AU Peace and Security Council. We expect the AU Peace and Security Council will find a solution to this impasse sooner than later so that the people of Abia, who have suffered and continue to suffer for so long, can finally make a decision about their own uh, livelihood and their belonging. A protocol concluded at the same time as the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement on Sudan provided for an intermediate status for the contested region. This until a referendum was held so the people of Abia could determine their future. The vote was initially expected to take place at the same time as the referendum for South Sudanese independence, when in January 2011, South Sudan overwhelmingly voted for secession. The two countries still contest the eligibility of those entitled to vote in any ABA referendum.